MS is not a diagnosis that can be contained just to the person who's, who's been diagnosed. The caregiver role is multifaceted. It's complex and it's something I never, never anticipated um, would be this complex. How do I explain it? You know, I was starting to use a walker and a cane and then all of a sudden, all I knew I was in a wheelchair. You know, that was the only way I could get around. For the most part, he helps me get in and out of the car and then he helps me in and out of bed and sometimes off the toilet and then I can do my makeup, blow dry my hair. I can do all the necessity things. I can get dressed. It's up occasionally I can't pull my britches up, you know, and I have to have my husband do that, you know, which kind of annoys him. But hey, we need help, you need help. It is a very overwhelming thing. I mean, it's, there's, you know, we, I think on the surface, we probably look like we have it all together, but in reality, um, a lot of times the wheels are falling off the cart and we don't know which way is up. The most common care partnership we think about is between spouses or partners, but it could also be a parent of an adult child with MS. There's so many things on my plate. If it wasn't for my mother, it would be a lot harder to take care of. My son, he, he came home and he, he had said to me back then, Mom, there's something wrong with me and I can't put my finger on it. I pretty much take care of him, his everything. Uh, laundry, shopping for him, cooking for him, picking up little things. There are moments that I feel down and depressed with some of the things that go on around here. I have talked to my doctor at times, so uh, that kind of helped me get through some of this. So recently things have been a lot better, but in the past I, I definitely had difficulties. And depression and uh, resentment, irritability, anxiety are very common in support partners as well. With MS it gets very complex and you feel like the walls are closing in and your life gets very compressed and um, your ability to do things becomes less and less. You were a lover, you were a friend, you were a, a companion in a way that had presumably a lot of variety and richness and fullness. Now the relationship mostly uh, one of you dedicating a lot of time to caring for this other person. It's a sign that it, it's time to see if there are ways to adjust and shift and bring back a sense of, of uh, the duality, a sense of partnership, a sense of both people contributing to the relationship. If we're having any problems, any friction between the two of us, I don't let it get into a heated argument. I usually step away. I give him time to think. I will say something first. I will step away and give us some time. And most times when I come back, we can talk about it. Communication is uh, critical in a care partnership. Talking about feelings, concerns, does not magically fix anything or resolve issues, but it does lay the groundwork for understanding and for coming to solutions together and identifying ways that you can shift to make adjustments or changes that are necessary. Communication um, has always been good. I, I think, uh, you know, with dealing with a chronic illness, it's maybe even made it better, where we're probably more open and frank with each other than we ever have been before, because we have to be. An effective care partnership requires that each person in the partnership, the person with MS and the other person, um, feel as good as they can feel. It's only when you've paid adequate attention to your own health and well-being that you can be a fully effective and engaged support partner for somebody else. If I can get in one hour for me to clear my head, get some exercise, keep my physical health up, then I'm a better caregiver, I'm a better parent, I'm a better business manager, and I'm just a better person and I'm happier. If I don't work out for a couple days, I tend to get a little grumpy. People um, who are 
taking care of someone that is disabled in any way, I think that they need to know when it's time to get some real help. One of the most important and helpful strategies for uh, care partners who are living with a chronic, unpredictable disease like MS is to get educated early on. So I really encourage care partners to think about the things that they are most worried about. Everybody has those fears. What if this happens? What if that happens? And I think the best way to deal with those fears that plague us is to sit down and say, okay, okay, what would happen? If that were to come to pass, what steps could I take today? What resources could I tap so that I would feel prepared? If you worry about being able to manage a multi-story house, rather than worrying about it, you think about the alternatives, what you might do, how you might modify your life and the place where you live so that that's all workable for you. With those kinds of solutions in your back pocket, you feel more prepared. You've created a safety net for yourselves and you don't feel as vulnerable. Yeah, you know, we haven't got to the point where we bring in, you know, like daycare or nurse or anything. And we're, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to hold off as long as we can for that kind of thing, but um, in the meantime, you know, she's got a, you know, one of these you know, support buttons that she can push that, that uh, local EMTs, which are just down the road, will come and help her out in a non-emergency fashion um, that she can talk to and explain what's going on. Um, we've got, you know, a really nice group of neighbors that also are willing to help out. Um, so, you know, we've got things in place. We've got a lot of family close by that, that help out. Moving down here, Things got better because then I was closer to my doctors. I was closer to get my medications. I live in this beautiful home. I can pretty much go anywhere I want to. I use a cane. I use a walker. I use a power chair. I would use any assistant device that would help me. And then I found the King Adult Daily Enrichment Program, which is right down the road, which I give the credit to my best behavior being coming from the King Adult Day Enrichment Program. Uh, there's groups, things to do, people to meet, and um, there's many things that those professionals can do to help someone that has what my son has. And uh, they really have helped turn him around. I mean, all the positive things that I have tried I, I, I needed more help. When he was little, he used to be Super Dave, and he's still my Super Dave. Just because you have MS doesn't mean you can't be happy. It's a mental thing. You have to get yourself mentally prepared to try and get yourself on the other side. And uh, you know, for me, my faith in God very much helped that. And my mother and all her help really helps that. And my friends at KDAP helped that. You gotta dig deep to find things that <laughs> that'll get you through. But um, you know, for us, uh, you know, we love to giggle and laugh and be silly, and we always have, and that's something that uh, that we really turn to. You know, and also for us, you know, we love music. Music makes us happy, makes us smile. Um, it's great therapy. My advice to to others, other caregivers, would be. Um, you know, to reach out and, and get as much help as you possibly can because it's a lot to deal with. It's a lot on anybody's plate in addition to daily stuff you've got to deal with in life. Um, and it's also important to be proactive. If you establish your resources and reach out and get some support earlier in the process, you're more likely to develop skills that will carry you through for the long term.